Hi, Gary Stearman. This uh, program is being recorded on the 19th of June, Tuesday, for release on Wednesday, June 20th. And today, as promised yesterday, we're going to talk about some amazing stories coming out of the Middle East. The United States and Russia deploying in Syria. From Debka file, the failure of U.S. President Barack Obama and Russian President Vladimir Putin to agree on terms for Syria and Iran on Monday at the G20 summit of Los Cabos, Mexico, holds the potential for three equally disastrous scenarios to unfold in Syria. No, number one, it could degenerate into another Afghanistan. And by the way, you may have noticed that it's on its way toward doing that right now. Number two, it could degenerate into another Balkans that is dividing Syria up into several uh, territories, each represented by one enemy force. Or number three, it could be the, in the next arena of war for al-Qaeda. All three possibilities... Uh, are just about equally foreseeable. Uh, from Debka file, Middle East military tensions around Syria shot up again last Monday, June 18th, with the news reported by the semi-official semi uh, Iranian news agency FARS that a joint Russian-Chinese-Iranian exercise is to take place in Syria. It was described as, quote, the biggest of its kind ever staged in the Middle East, end quote, with 90,000 personnel, 400 airplanes, and 900 tanks taking part. As part of its preparations, Beijing is reported to have asked Egyptian authorities to permit the passage through the Suez Canal in late June of 12 naval ships, heading for the Syrian port of where else? Tartus. That's where the Russian fleet is already docked. Uh, the Syrian port of Tartus, where Moscow maintains a naval and marine base. Debka file reported earlier this week that Russian naval vessels with Marines on board were heading for Tartus. The large-scale uh, maneuver was announced in Tehran on the first day of the nuclear crisis talks in Moscow between Iran and six world powers. So you notice that this story started with another story, and I'm going to reread this, which I consider to be a, a, a very, very important uh, factor. The failure of U.S. President Barack Obama and Russian President Vladimir Putin last Monday at the G20 summit in Los Cabos, Mexico, is what I think really put the seal on this whole thing. And it was reported in, uh, in, in a number of different news agencies that Putin and Obama did not get along well at all in those talks. In fact, they, they more or less lined up head-to-head -head as, as enemy uh, adversaries, and there was very little peace talk going on there. I have here from the Times of Israel, <clears throat> June 19th, quote, Iran, Syria, Russia, China are planning, quote, the biggest ever war games in the Middle East, according to an unconfirmed report. According to the article, four countries are going to be preparing war games, and we've already described those games as uh, having at least 90,000 uh, participants on the ground. The report states that, quote, atomic submarines from Russia and warships, aircraft carriers, and mine-clearing destroyers, as well as Iranian battleships and submarines, will also arrive in Syria, and that Egypt has let those 12 ships go through the Suez Canal from China on their way to the uh, eastern Mediterranean. <clears throat> Financial Times of London uh, says that Russia has announced that it's readying two warships to sail to Syria to protect Russian citizens. <clears throat> My goodness. Let me reread this. Russia has announced it's uh, readying two war warships to sail to Syria to protect Russian citizens in a sign that it is taking precautions against uh, a uh, worsening security situation there. Again, and we've said this so many times over the last 
three months or so, each day in the Middle East you see a slight tightening, uh, a, a slight uh, drama, an ever so slight uh, increase in the drama and tension in the Middle East. And, and here we see it again. <clears throat> a spokesman for the Russia, Russia's Black Sea Fleet, a gentleman by the name of Vyacheslav Truchkarov, says that uh, the mission would be undertaken, quote-unquote, in case of necessity. Hmm. What would be the necessity? The necessity, in my opinion, would be if military tensions develop to such a state that uh, Russia fears backlash along its southern flank, here comes the fleet. And Russia has already begun to feel that pressure. Uh, Russia's precautions came as Barack Obama, the U.S. president, and Vladimir Putin, his Russian counterpart, called for an end to violence in Syria and moves toward political transition to a democratic, pluralistic political system after talks last Monday at the G20 summit in Mexico. Well, as we've already seen, uh, those talks came to nothing, and Putin and Obama did not see eye to eye at all. Again, the, the situation in Syria grows daily more tense, more dramatic, uh, it becomes, I think, a tripwire in the Middle East. And in Isaiah 17, which is uh, a prophecy that we've read so many times, <coughs> concerning the destruction of Damascus, Syria's capital, uh, let's read some words that we've heard before, but now in the context of military maneuvers in the Mediterranean, listen to these words. Isaiah 17:12 Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters you know we've tended to think of that as a metaphor the sound of the sea and the sound of the water being kind of a metaphor for uh, people moving but maybe it's not as much of a metaphor as it is a harbinger of the idea that much of the uh, weaponry that uh, is beginning to join the, uh, this Middle East war is coming by way of the Mediterranean, the Suez Canal, uh, and then around to uh, the Persian Gulf, the Gulf of Arabia, so forth and so on. The Arabian Sea, you know, might pay to reread re these words. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters but god shall rebuke them they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind like a rolling thing before the whirlwind and an evening tide trouble and before the morning he is not this is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. Wow. Well, something to think about. I've got a lot of news releases here, and not a single one of them points at a lessening of tensions. Each and every single one of these news releases is pointing toward increased tensions and increased militarism in the Middle East. Fascinating to watch, a little bit frightening. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, 6. They shall prosper that love thee. Gary Stearman. Hmm. Keep looking up, everybody.